So there is a lot of species placement uh, in the last couple of days. Actually, we're just talking about another one in this video. So a new genus from Central America got described to house a already known species. Um, so that's basically what we're going to talk about today. If you're interested, make sure you watch it all to the end so you'll get some additional information. So when we start with this video, first of all, there will be no live tarantula footage. If you want to see uh, footage from this newly described genus of uh, tarantula from Central America, then you should go over to Guy Tansley's page. I will link it up here, his YouTube channel. He has uh, material of this new genus Sandinista Lanceolotum. And yeah, you should check it out. So I thought for a long time on how to display this new publication, um, but there's just no way around that you actually, if you're interested in, just head over to the World Spider Catalog and download it and read it yourself. It's like the best possible way to show how you actually have to work with museum material to like solve all these crazy riddles around the name and the placement. So Longhorn and Gabriel reworked so much material of Central America that they actually have now a foundation to start their wider Avenopelmara vision. So in the US, the Avenopelmara vision was in 2016 and the actual Avenopelma type of the genus Avenopelma is Avenopelma semani and this one is from Costa Rica. So the true Avenopelma species are in fact from Central America and not from the United States. So that's the topic Longhorn and Gabriel, two UK arachnologists are working on on the, yeah, probably right placement of these Central American tarantulas. And this one is the very start of it. They have now created a new genus for a former Avenopelma species, and it is totally different in the bulb morphology. That's the reason why they are creating a new genus for it. So it's a monotypic genus, meaning that at the moment there is not really a second or other species within this new species, Sandinista. And yeah, it's quite interesting because you have to start somewhere and if there is no placement for specific features which have actually showed that they are valuable or usable, then you have to create a new genus and that's exactly what they did. So that's the reason why they created this new genus because it did not fit in any known genus and that's basically a good and valid start so it was in 2012 where we actually were able to participate in this very research. So we were able to get research and collecting permissions for Nicaragua and therefore collected material for this research with uh, one of the authors of the paper. Now, seven years later, they were able to work and rework all the material from museum collections and now have a good standpoint and definition on why this is actually a new genus. So talking about the pet trade a little bit, it's a fun fact because it got imported a lot of times in the past. Probably some single specimens got imported while like importing or exporting Brachypelma albopilosum from Nicaragua and Avenopelma semani. So a lot of times the juvenile ones do look a lot like the Avenopelma semani. So the collectors in these countries like Nicaragua actually collected just a bunch of juvenile specimens and then exported it. And in the UK, uh, Sherwood, Gabriel and Kirby found out that it's in fact one of these called Brachypelma fossorium species. So they wrote an article in 2016 um, describing that there is in fact a new species in the hobby due to these ex exports of Nicaragua and that you have to consider them as a different species and not mix them up. It also happened in the US that some of these exports from Nicaragua got important as Avenopelma paloma, which is a native species endemic to the United States from the south. So 
It actually got mixed up and the labels were somewhat not that specific, but uh, now there is no longer a uncertain trade name, but Gabriel and Longhorn actually worked on this very species and now, yeah, described it as a new genus and actually did find out that it's not a new species to science, but it is a species called Aphonopelma lanceolotum, which got described quite a few years back. So that's also a point which is very fascinating about the paper. They're not just taking some specimens from the museum or from the wild and saying, well, that's a new species, but they reworked a lot of the museum material and the already described specimens, even though they were in very bad shape and hard to acquire and damaged. So that's quite a statement because they rework all the history and also write all the history down. So it's somewhat of a Sherlock Holmes puzzle thing. They like, yeah, it's just, it's truly amazing. And if you're interested in this topic, make sure you download it and read through all of it. Even though you don't understand, you can certain stuff, just Google it and you will find uh, an answer to your questions. But that's the thing I'll just would like to highlight because now in the days with uh, DNA, it's maybe becoming a practice just to describe new species as a new species without even looking at older material from people who have worked on it in the past, like 1890, 1920, 1930. They have all done somewhat of work because in their best intentions, they actually did all the best possible things to like describe a new species and uh, they're reworking all of the stuff and if they find something which is consistent or maybe showing the same species description or species traits they're not describing it as a new species but actually referring to the original descriptor and yeah it's just hard to explain with my vocabulary it's already 10 pm so after a long work shift it might, might not be the best thing to talk about systematics and taxonomy. But coming to the pet trade again, it's a species which has not been bred many times. I've heard about wild caught XX, but in captivity it's probably quite hard to breed them because they have such a difference in weather and temperature. So it might be something worthwhile to try out because now it's no longer a species described, it's characterized and diagnosable, is that even a word? But even though you can now be certain that you have this sort of species in this new genus and you could and should start breeding this. If you own one, make sure you can acquire somewhere uh, adult males or juvenile males and raise them up to adulthood. Would be great to see them bred in the hobby because it's not necessary to get more uh, wild caught specimen from this species. It's the perfect example of a species which is would fit in the 50 shades of brown area. Uh, that's a running joke, but uh, it's a brown species, but there's so many different browns and grays that freshly molted, it looks amazing. So another mention to Guy Tansley, um, his video of Sandinista lanceolotum in the wild and the pictures of ours, I'll display somewhere here. Um, it's a beautiful specimen and the reason why it got described as a new genus is just simply the fact that some features did not fit in any genus description. So the bulb morphology, as I mentioned earlier, is like different and did not fit. And they also have the type 1 urticating hair without any colorful markings on the abdomen. So that's another reason why it's not in the Davos genus. Um, it just uh, did not fit any, any known and valid uh, genus descriptions. So we don't have to make this video too long. Short summary, there is a new genus called Sandinista in remarks of the yeah, political party in Nicaragua who was against the dictator back in the days. So that's why the genus is called Sandinista. And this new genus actually houses the former Avanopelma lanceolotum and therefore makes it the new combination of Sandinista lanceolotum 
and it basically is the species which is in the hobby as Terraphosinae species Pacific Nicaragua or Brachypelma fossorium. So there are several different names, make sure you check them and maybe you already have one of these Sandanista lanceolotum back at your place and if you do, make sure you leave us a comment. It would be great to hear how many are out there actually. And for the moment we are talking about these revisions, but uh, as you can see in the background, something is changing a little. So I hope in the future we can do more pet trade tarantula stuff and actually showcasing some of the tarantulas I have in my collection. So we'll cover that in the future for sure. Also some enclosure builds like the one you see here um, will be in future videos. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. And that's it for now. Enjoy the rest of your week and thanks for watching.